and welcome to another CFMA training series, episode 14, looking at the new contact warning system we're looking to introduce. So what is it? It um, utilises situations that do not warrant automatic penalties, such as contact with another vehicle that forces it off the track, or to lose control resulting in lost positions. Um, it is designed for situations where contact is made, but there is no disadvantage to the infringed car with regards to track position, but due to damage, um, car handling and performance is affected. So, um, yeah, we've had situations where cars are hit, they go off the track, um, you know, people lose position. So, trying trying to target more the um, smaller contact that still affects the driver's race. So, um, the definition is any time a driver makes contact with another vehicle under brakes, causing damage to the aerodynamics, such as the spoilers, and or significant damage to internals, such as the engine and steering, etc and or contact forces the infringed vehicle to make further contact with a third party so indirect involvement in an incident so if that last bit didn't make sense to you basically what we're saying is um, where car A hits car B under brakes and um, already caught may or may not cause damage but it forces car B into car C um, which we'll have an example of in a few seconds um, this one you're about to look at here is more of your direct um, contact under brakes. So we're trying to encourage drivers to race even cleaner again. So you'll see here contact with that car one um, under brakes now. In this instance it caused damage to the arrows and um, a little bit of damage to um, part of the handling. So um, this can offset a car for the remainder of the race and um, regardless of repair. So um, again and the, other, and the other part of it is if um, there's enough damage caused to the car that's being um, hit, especially when you're talking about rear mounted engines, um, they might have to travel a lap and a half of the damaged engine and significantly reduced power. So um, this one is prime example of A, B and C. So just watching here, the green car that's gone off to the left um, was in second or first almost and all of a sudden is back in fifth by the end of this. So not only did they lose position but um, also there was contact made. So um, in this instance the car 9 was the one that made the contact So, um, but it wasn't car 9's fault. So as you see here so just contact here between the grey car and car 9 and that's given a little bit extra shunt to car 9 and it forces forces it a bit further into the corner and the green car obviously gets it's very light contact um, but the damage is done and and that car drops back but because it's indirect um, it's very hard to turn around and say that uh, that person should be automatically penalised. So rather than do that, um, and they, as you can see there, that's for that little bit of contact has forced the green car wide. So rather than an automatic penalty in this instance, um, a warning would be issued. So and here's just another example of um, causing damage under brakes um, where there's no be there's been no disadvantage to track position. Uh, just have a look from different views. So pretty heavy contact under brakes. Um, and again so you know with the warning system hopefully it discourages people. So how it works. Drivers are allowed two warnings. Upon receiving the third warning they'll be penalised 10 championship points. Then the warnings are reset. Warnings are issued via the steward's report um, at the end of each round as per normal and this system will come into effect for season 2 of 2012 and we will aim to keep a tally of how many warnings someone may have um, with an asterisk next to their um, penalty points in the championship leaderboard so that way you're, sort of, you're aware of whether you've got uh, one, one warning or two warnings against your name. Um, any more uh, information just go to our website and have a look at the rules there thank you for watching